All right. So I've got the Google interview coming up in next one month. So that leaves me if I if I study two hours every day, about sixty hours of time to prep for it. Okay. So let's get my old lead code account logged in and let's start coding. All test cases failed. This is embarrassing. I don't know where I went wrong. I can't make sense of it. How am I ever going to get into Google? But wait, I'm applying for the data engineering board, right? Not the SD. Yeah. So, so let's just let's just skip the DSA part and jump right into Spark. Hi everyone, this is Josh and I'm a data engineer working with Google in the Google Cloud team. So if you made an assumption like I did that you can just skip DSA because you're applying for a data engineering role and not an SDE role, you might be very wrong. Let me give you a little bit of background about myself. I worked at ZS for three years as a data engineer and ZS is a management consulting firm, but every management consulting firm has this arm that is completely technical. In ZS, we were called architecture and engineering team. So what we would do is we would create different products and that would help accelerate our clients' deliverables and then reuse it across multiple clients to sell many projects as possible. Now, this also involved a lot of R&D and my entire work was dependent on big data technology. I had experience in AWS, Azure, big data, tools stack like PySpark, Hadoop, Python, but I never really had a lot of experience. Actually, I had zero experience to be honest on Google Cloud. I received a message on LinkedIn that uh, Google is opening up office in Pune and uh, there's an option to apply for the data engineering role in the Google Cloud team. So I was really excited, but at the same time I thought, oh right, I have no experience on GCP and they're obviously going to ask a lot on that. But I thought, okay, you know, let's just give it a try and then here we are. So ever since posting my update on LinkedIn that I have joined Google, I have received tremendous amount of direct message requests and connection that I have not been able to accept all of them. Uh, but I have kind of uh, received a pattern that people wanted to know what exactly is being asked in the interviews, how many rounds are there, what exactly do you have to prepare if you want to crack Google with the similar data engineering role. So I've created a post on LinkedIn that summarizes all the rounds, but that is very brief at very high level. I'm going to link it down in the description below. I'm going to talk a little bit in detail about uh, what was my interview experience and this is not an this is not a video that is going to tell you that uh, you know these are 10 ways you can get selected at google i don't know all of the ways that you can get selected at google and i cannot guarantee you uh, but i can share you my interview experience and just hope that it will be helpful to some of you so let's just get started so i've been very active on linkedin and one of the reasons being it's a it's a great platform where you can network with a ton of smart people and uh, it can also lend you your next job opportunity that you dream of and that did come true with me in case of google so i was approached by a recruiter that they wanted to fill up this position for the cloud data engineering role now you know this first part is the part that differs most from applicants to applicants because how do you get an interview is something you know there are 10 different ways to do it you can get a referral you can directly apply or you can maybe talk to somebody whose team is directly hiring and talk to their hiring manager and go from there or you can be approached by a recruiter like i did i'm just going to share my experience about how i was able to get an interview she reached out to me uh, and said you know they are hiring for one of the roles and i said you know what i'm really interested in working with google but not at this role so is it possible if i can get a data engineering role at google and she said no because i don't hire for data engineering role at google and luckily a couple of weeks later another recruiter reached out to me and this was for the role that i wanted and all of these things were on linkedin right so i gave her my contact number we got on a call and there was a technical screening round 
So now coming to the technical screening round, this is going to be a this is going to be like a rapid fire where they ask you a ton of questions in very short span. The round length can be about 30 to 45 minutes. So here they would ask you, you know, rapid fire questions about DSA or algorithms or big data distributed systems can be on Spark, things like that. And also a lot of questions on cloud and as well as my experience. There were a couple of questions that I had to submit written answer to on an email to her specifically after the round ended, which I did. and. After that, she called me that, okay, I'm shortlisted with, which was great. So I had cleared my first round and I was shortlisted for the next one. So in the next round, I was not very sure that what exactly they are going to ask me, but recruiter got in touch with me and she explained the entire process that uh, they'll be focusing on DSA, they'll be focusing on SQL and data-based question. So I'm not saying data-based questions, these are data-based questions. So these questions can be anything about big data, Spark, Hadoop, Hive, uh, and cloud computing, big data processing pipelines, batch pipelines, stream pipelines. So there are, you know, you get the idea. So there were broadly these three types of questions that can be asked in the technical interview. First round, what I got was, uh, I had a data modeling question. Now, these kind of questions are usually very broad. You need to ask a lot of questions, a lot of counter questions. So let's say they are saying, you know, uh, this is an ABC company in the XYZ industry and they want to create a data model and they have reached out to you. How will you approach this? So you need to figure out that, okay, do, what, what are they selling? What is the product? Uh, what are the records? that are required to capture my data. For example, if they are selling a drug, it can be anything about the drug price and number of drugs sold, uh, num areas by which you no know, drugs are being sold, etc., etc. But if they are opening up a movie theater, it can be about what are the time of a movie show uh, and how do you capture that? How do you capture user tickets? So you need to create different tables around these scenarios. Once you have done that, you need to also you know ask questions like, is this an OLAP data, data or is this an OLTP data? Uh, so according to that, you can create a normalized or denormalized uh, data model. Once you have done that, uh, he asked me about uh, a SQL query. So this was a very complex SQL query. It, it contained about three to four different uh, aggregations and joins in a single query. But the catch was you have to use your own created data model for it. So if you have missed, any pivotal field you might get caught here so so you need to make sure that uh, you know you're comprehensive about your data model question so once that was done there was a simple python question this was i would say easy between easy to medium which was a simple dsa question i will not be able to share exact questions on any kind of uh, questions that were, that were asked in the interviews because we obviously have a confidentiality agreement i can just share a broad Theme. Right, so once this round was clear, after about a week, they scheduled the next round, and this round was uh, strictly DSA. Like there were a couple of questions, uh, and I was able to solve it using Python. You can obviously choose your language, whatever you prefer. And there were also a couple of questions around uh, cloud-based uh, processing pipelines, and these were mostly around the experiences that I had, like from my resume. So that was helpful. And uh, also one more thing, when you're applying for a big data role, the DSA question bar won't be same as an SDE role. Yeah, it will not be an SDE lead code hard level, but it can be anywhere from anywhere around lead code medium level. Because in data engineering interviews, they're not just going to check your coding aptitude or problem solving aptitude. They're also going to check your knowledge on cloud ecosystem and big data ecosystem containing Spark and Hadoop, etc. So there are, and also questions around data modeling, like I explained. So there are a lot of areas which are covered extra. So that's why when it comes to DSA questions, it's not as hard as uh, what, which are being asked in SDE rounds of interviews. All right, so these are three different rounds. And then in my fourth round, I was given a system design question where I had to, you know, it was on a very broad level. It was a big data processing pipeline that I had to create using different cloud components, which is exactly what you would expect in any data engineering uh, interviews. 
yeah you would have to be wary about uh, components that you are choosing because they might question your choices so you know you need to be able to justify your answer that okay why did you choose a component over b and c what are its advantages and what not uh, you also need to keep in mind that are there any open source components that you can use for your pipeline that is going to help you save cost like that so that's how system design interviews are done specifically talking about data engineering role this was the longest interview to be honest it was around 1.5 hours uh, and they had in-depth questions about spark these questions were related to your actual experience in spark so for example you cannot just expect to study about spark and hope that you'll be able to clear this there were lots of practical questions like for example if you're facing this issue how will you tackle it the only way you'll be able to answer this question is if you have actually faced this issue so you need to explain your approach how will you solve this question uh, what exactly what are the steps that you will take in your spark environment and finally get the job running uh, the postscript about this interview round was that you don't really need to worry about not knowing gcp so i chose mostly aws or azure based components while creating the big data pipeline uh, i didn't use gcp because i have really no experience in it and they were okay with it so they don't expect you to know everything about gcp just because you're applying at google uh, because mostly these cloud platforms 80 percent of them are similar with each other yeah, 20% AWS has some different features, Azure would have some different features and similar thing for GCP. Uh, but mostly the concept remains the same and they understand that. Although if you do know about GCP, it can be a very big plus. So these were my four technical rounds and after clearing them, I had like after a couple of weeks, I had a behavioral round. So. This round is the Googliness round, as they call it. So these are different behavioral, situational based questions. You know, it's about if this happens, how would you tackle them in your team, etc., etc. But you need to make sure that you are showing empathy, you are showing leadership skills, and uh, good problem solving, good risk taking abilities in, the, in, in this round, and also obviously good communication skill. Yeah, so these are all different five rounds that I had in my interview process. And all right, so what happens after this? That's the big question, right? Do you directly get the wording that you're passed or not? No, not directly. Uh, after clearing all the rounds, your application would go to the hiring committee level. So hiring committee is like group of people coming together and looking at your profile, looking at your all interview feedback and finally saying that okay whether they should give an offer or not there is also a team match round for this is not applicable to everyone so let's say your role is not very specific from the start for example if you're applying for a, for a SDE role at google now so it's a very broad role right you could, you could be working at ads you could be working at uh, google cloud you could be working at youtube right so then these kind of team matching rounds would happen for you even when you have selected YouTube, there are n number of different teams, right? So you would have to select a team for you. So here is where tables are a little bit turned on uh, your side. So it's like you're interviewing the team, but you also need to make sure that you're showing curiosity to join that particular team. So this was not applicable in my case uh, because I had a very specific role from the start. Uh, so once you have your team matching, your recruiter will contact you that, you know, you have cleared all rounds and you have been selected. They would ask for your you know, expected compensation and then offer discussion would start from that phase. So yes, that's about it. I know it was lengthy, but that's how Google interviews are. Yes, they usually take about two to four months, to be honest. So I really hope this video was helpful to you guys. And, all right. So I'm not really a uh, a regular youtuber in fact this is the first time i'm creating this type of content so if you liked it do give it a like and you can subscribe to the channel and if you have any specific questions or suggestions you can mention that in the comments also you can follow me on linkedin i am dropping a link in the description below uh, you can also ask any questions you have on linkedin comment section in any one of my posts or here so if there are you know too many follow-up questions that i do one thing that i just create a follow-up video specifically for FAQs. Also, you guys can share this video to anyone who you think it might be helpful for. Yeah, that's it from my end. See you next time.
And there is one more thing that I have to share with you guys. You will never be successful if you are unable to crack Google or Microsoft or Apple or Fang or similar tech giants. You are going to be successful if you stay in a service based company. You have to switch to a product based company. All these stereotypes are a lie. Let me tell you that. Getting into Google or similar type of company does not mean that you have received, you have reached an ultimate goal in your life. No, not by any chance. If you look at the average tenure of Google, for example, it's about 3.6 years. If you look at Amazon, I think it's even less. So it's not like people come here and they stay here for the rest of their life. This is just another milestone in the journey. Yeah, it feels good. It's a good achievement to have on your resume. But there are many ways you can be successful without coming to FANG. If you have a good work-life balance, if you like your culture, if you are earning well or earning enough, you're happy in your life, that's successful enough. Uh, and also getting rejected in any type of interview does not define you as an engineer. In fact, uh, I have a lot of interview experiences. I have experience in Databricks, Seagate, Deloitte, Oracle, and many more. And most of the interviews were really, really good. Uh, so I wouldn't say I'm better engineer than most people, but uh, yeah, I may be a better interviewer than some of them. So even if you are rejected in any process, don't let it set you back. I mean, it's just a failure, learn from it and just keep moving forward. And next time I'm sure you guys will definitely do better. So yeah, that's it what I had from my side. See you guys next time.